Hello, it is Saturday, June 1st, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday crossword today, so it's a themeless puzzle, and <laughs> of a grid that I would say is almost foreboding. It's unbelievably empty looking, at least what we can see of it uh, through the gauzy privacy veil. So I'm very curious about uh, about this grid and, and how, how spacey it ends up being once we've revealed the rest. And this foreboding edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Mitchell Turek, Henrik Koskinen, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incorrigible Sheeler Beeler. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel. They sustain it every day and make it a part of my ongoing daily work for that. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much to the four of them. And thanks to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Self Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate the efforts of everybody who's a patron at any level. Thank you so much for supporting the channel in that way. If you'd like to do so, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link uh, and you'll find all of the bonus videos, including this week's, uh, yesterday's last seven days of mini puzzles uh, solved fairly quickly. The mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. I don't know that I would say they were solved very quickly this week. It was not, this was probably my weakest uh, times, the weakest times I've posted in the a week of minis in quite a while. Um, but anyway, they're always fun. I enjoy them. And in fact, we had a return of Joel Faliano to actually construct some of those. Our uh, old uh, former mini crossword editor, who's uh, or constructor, who's now the daily editor. In any case, that's up there. Thanks to everybody who who is a Patreon subscriber and. Uh, went on longer than I intended, so let's just get on to the puzzle. This is a Saturday construction. It's a Saturday themeless puzzle. May well be the trickiest puzzle of the week, and it's by Eric Warren, who's constructed uh, just a couple of puzzles, I think, for the New York Times. It was edited once again by Joel Faliano. Let's start solving. Okay, okay. It's not it's not as spacey as I was imagining. I was I was imagining something almost empty looking, but uh, it's not quite that bad. Anyway, five. In fact, we don't have any grid spanning answers, which I thought maybe we would. Anyway, five star as a hotel. Um, upscale maybe. I don't know if that's right. It's my first guess, but let's look at the crosses and see. Imago's to be. Okay. Well, Imago is a. It's it's a sort of. I don't think this is going to be that, uh, because it's it's some kind of pupil or larval stage of of you know a moth or something like that. Um, so I mean, it could be Imago's to be. So this is before the Imago stage. Never mind. Okay, I was imagining it was going to be moths, but I was thinking about it the wrong way. So, so maybe it is pupae then. And maybe the Imagos are the larval stage. It could be. Five stars a hotel. I don't know if that actually looks any better. Dig up. Oh, but this could be. Dig up could be unearth. And then what about this spread throughout? To spread throughout would be to not persist, to, I can't think what it is. Their bodies are worked on autos, auto bodies, cars. I think that's right. Top. Could be top as in, you know, the highest point of something could be top as a verb to top, to, you know, sort of improve upon something or someone. I, I don't know why I can't see what it is. Company original fo originally founded as Sleeper Incorporated. Okay, I didn't know this. I was unaware of this name, but there is a mattress company uh, called Serta, I think is what it is. So that is probably the answer. What a bull in a china shop causes. Oh, interesting. If not for that A, I would have thought this would be chaos. Oh, but havoc. No, never mind. Yeah, that's fine. Havoc, chaos, very, very similar. To remove from memory is to erase. There we go, from computer memory, for instance. And yardstick abbreviation is standard. Sort of the, 
you know, yardstick is sometimes used metaphorically to mean the standard by which things are judged. So that, that could be it. Oh, poshest? The, the most posh hotel, the most sort of fancy and expensive hotel, although this doesn't look very good. We'll come back to that in a moment. So yeah, I think that's five star as a hotel, the poshest hotel. Oh no, I misspelled it. That's I'm sorry. That's why this looks wrong. So I just put another H in there for some reason. No, posh just with a T, obviously. Okay, well that's that's the answer. So top is oh pervade. Pervade is spread to spread throughout an area would be to uh, pervade it. There we go. Okay, great. And to top someone is to one up them, so it is to improve upon. There we go. Flighty sorts in two senses. Oh, oh, maybe this isn't pupae, but pupas. Okay, I suppose that can probably be, um, it's probably valid to uh, pluralize it in either manner. So there we go. Flighty sorts in two senses, uh, space cadets. There we go. So space cadet can be used, obviously, I suppose, to literally refer to maybe an astronaut candidate or, um, or maybe not a candidate, but a, a trainee, uh, but also metaphorically to use to refer to someone who's sort of just a little bit out of it. Okay, so a popular news podcast since 2017. Uh, I think the New York Times has a news podcast, new, news podcast called The Daily. So I think that's, I think that's what that is. Uh, that's my guess, especially since this is a New York Times publication. Exclamation in hospital dramas. Oh, clear when they. Um, bring out the defibrillator and, and uh, are about to attempt to resuscitate. Created an account, question mark, lied. So if you, if you created an account, you, you invented a fictionalized story about something, an account of it. So I think that's what that is. That's a, that's a very clever clue. I like that a lot. They can be Horatian. Horatian odes, the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword. Was Horatio owed on a Grecian urn? I think maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Maybe not. I could be wrong. Now that I think about it, I think that's probably wrong. <laughs> Who wrote? That's much more modern than, than than Horace. I don't know. Sorry, my my poetic knowledge is failing me. Anyway, hard. It wouldn't make sense that he would have called it Grecian anyway. Uh, hard pass. Don't want to or don't wanna maybe hard pass. I mean, it means absolutely no, but it's slightly slangy, so which is why I'm thinking maybe it could be wanna. I'll try it and see. Hit in the head. If you beamed someone, you hit them in the head. So that's right. Okay, no, this doesn't look good. Earmark with yeah, the two, two T's don't don't look good. Okay, maybe this is all nothing. So what is earmark? To earmark something is to sort of save it or to set it aside. But it could be earmark as a noun. It doesn't need to be a verb. I don't know. I'm going to move on. Britons and others. I mean, does it mean Celts? Is, it, is that what it's referring to? In the sense of the sort of native stock of Great Britain? Or I guess in this case, Britons, it would be more of sort of, you know, people who now would be genetically more Welsh, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's probably Celts. Um, hard pass. Do not want. That's a that's a phrase. There we go. And and that's actually good. It's a good match with hard pass because these are both sort of modern clipped ways of, of saying absolutely not. Hard pass. Do not want. Yeah, that's a good match. So hit in the head. It still could be beamed. Let's try it. I'm putting it back. Arrangement following a union agreement, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, this feels clever, but it feels cleverer than I'm currently being with, in my brain. Title woman in a 1968 Turtles hit. Um, I'm not sure who this is. The name of a song, obviously, but I, I don't know. Or at least part of the name of a song. Genetic variants. Oh, alleles? Is that... 
I don't remember if that's what this is. <laughs> I remember the phrase alleles have something to do with genetic variation, but you know, I don't, I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember any more specific explanation than that. I wish I could. I definitely remember learning about this, but I don't remember the details. Earmark. Okay, right. To a lot. To, so it is to sort of, it's being used as a verb in this case, to set something aside or to earmark it for a particular person, maybe to a lot it in this case to um, sort of hypothecate it, I guess could be another way to say earmark. Was close to, if one was close to someone, one knew them maybe. That could be the answer. Arrangement following a union agreement, perhaps back. Oh, back pay. Right. Okay. That, that makes sense. So a union could negotiate a new uh, salary agreement, say with a company or an industry. And then part of the agreement could be back pay to whenever the agreement is said to take, have taken effect retroactively. Okay. So I think that's right. A labor union, obviously. Um, animal on Greenland's coat of arms. Polar bear it must be. There we go. Queen's style. I mean, it could mean queen as a monarch, obviously. It could mean queen the band. could mean queen in the sense of a drag queen. Uh, and style also could mean any number of things. It could mean style in the sense of how you dress yourself or how you sort of act or operate or behave. But if it's referring to royalty, it could mean style in the sense of Her Majesty or that, that, sort, that style. Style of address. Yeah, too many options in both in, in each case. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, Eleanor, this must be. Or Eleonora, maybe? I sort of feel I probably know this song, and I probably would recognize it if I heard it, but not not enough to be able to yes jump to the answer. This looks like yesterday. No, it isn't. Uh, polite casual assent is not yesterday. It's yes something though. Polite casual assent. Yes, thanks. Okay. That's that's it. So this does look like Eleanor. Okay. So Queen's style. Huh. Doesn't doesn't ring a bell for me. When doubled, gung ho, rah rah. There we go. Oh, re oh, it is Queen the Band. It's Arena Rock. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, yeah, I suppose. I suppose they overlapped onto Arena Rock. I mean, obviously they did play big arenas. Um, I don't feel as much like an arena rock band, but they obviously have individual songs that are absolutely that. I guess Queen is just such a diverse band in certain terms of style that I, I guess I would slightly balk at calling them this. But anyway, that's fine. I think it's fair enough. They certainly overlap into that. Um, opening for a spell, Abra as an abracadabra. And brand for which Garfield was once a spokescat. I mean, I don't know this as knowledge, but I could guess maybe that it's Alpo because that's a four letter animal rela pet related brand starting with an A. And that, that, I think that's food, pet food. And maybe they do other things as well, but pet food is what I, what I recognize. And then keep the hits coming to pile on, right? So not the hits in terms of sort of hits as in, you know, hit songs, but hits as in if you're really just uh, assaulting someone either verbally or in some other manner, you know, you're really piling on, you're keeping the hits coming. I think that's probably right. Global Lending Organization, IMF, International Monetary Fund, probably. Pitchers on a farm. Hay forks, as in pitchers in the sense of a pitchfork or pitching the hay. I, I'm not really familiar with the phrase hay fork, so I'm kind of guessing here. I don't actually know this is a word or correct, but I'm going to try it because it, it feels functionally like what it could be. One side of a transaction. Okay, well, it could be the payer or the payee. Um, don't think there's any way to know without looking at the cross eventually. Cram in. To cram in would be to jam pack something with people or goods or whatever. Annual music event in the Big Easy. Okay, well, that's New Orleans. Uh, jazz, jazz fest. I mean, I think there is a big jazz festival in New Orleans. Maybe it's just simply called that. Could be. Small, I've never been to New Orleans, actually. Uh, probably should do. Small appetizer in Turkish cuisine. Metze. Uh, which sometimes you see spelled with two Zs, I think, in its you know, sort of romanization. Uh, but I think that's probably the answer. 
And bad guy, I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll come back to it if need be. Bad guy. I don't know. Don't know what that is. Uh, not so nice, meaner. So you're not so nice, you're meaner. It's a, you know, if it were just not nice, it could be mean, but not so nice is, is relative. So uh, meaner than the other person. Kitchen concern with an oxymoronic name. Kitchen concern, freeze drying or something or freeze, freezer burn. Yeah, freezer burn. That's what it'll be. Uh, that obviously feels oxymoronic. It's an oxymoron in the sense that the phrase contradicts itself. I mean, freezing and burning are sort of, you know, in some sense, the opposite. But uh, this is referring to that effect that can uh, happen to food that's been frozen for, what, too long or sort of, I guess, probably. And it gets that kind of discoloration, the freezer burn. Uh, Let's see. Bad guy. Oh, oh, heel. Right. Okay. I think this comes from maybe professional wrestling terminology, a sort of character who's meant to be perceived negatively by, by the audience. It's sort of their, their job is to play that up. And so they're the bad guy. I think that's, and, and I think it's used more widely than that now. Um, I don't know very much about professional wrestling, so it's possible that this term doesn't come from that originally, but I assume it does. Anyway, river passing through Lake Geneva. The, oh, it's embarrassing that I don't immediately know this. <laughs> the Rhone or the Rhine? That's, I always get these mixed up, which is embarrassing. Uh, it's definitely one of those. Okay, rank. Uh, could be rank as in rank of office, but my guess with that F is that it's going to be rank as in smelly and disgusting and fetid. That's my thinking. When a school's marching band typically performs. Uh, halftime, I guess, or something half, huh? At the, oh, 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 at the half. I bet that's what it is. So that, I guess that's, sort of at halftime, essentially, is at the half, I guess it must be. That's, I, I've, I'm pretty sure I've heard that phrase before. I suspect that's right. Philosopher David, who wrote A Treatise of Human Nature, David Hume, a uh, very important philosopher of the uh, Scottish Enlightenment. I hope I didn't just say something ignorant, but I believe that's correct. Excavation site since the Bronze Age. Tin mine? Tin is used in bronze. So, I mean, I think you'd need, you'd, you'd quite simply need that. And it would make sense that probably before the Bronze Age, we didn't have tin mines because uh, there wasn't, you know, tin wasn't being sought in this quantity for this purpose. Okay, takes off. Probably ends with an S, or I guess it could be a two word phrase with the S somewhere else, but let's see if it does end with an S. One getting caught in a trap. I don't really have any guesses there, unfortunately. Crunchy salad bit. A crouton. Yes. Oh, I love croutons. So it's the Rhone. Okay, good. There we go. I need to just sort that out in my brain at some point it's for good. Inscribed Viking monument. Oh, I don't really have a guess about this, but it's interesting. Does it mean a specific monument, a specific site, or is it a category of thing? You know, this is this is a category of inscribed monument associated with the Vikings. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to know the answer. When one might be on track to arrive, on track, a something trip. So you're on some kind of track. I mean, obviously, you read this as on the surface, and it's it's well, one might be on track to arrive. One is scheduled to arrive, but I think probably it means you're physically on a track. Oh, so maybe a train trip. Yep, there we go. Oh, is this speeder? Yes, it is. One getting caught in a trap, you get caught in a speed trap. So, you know, with a police officer with a radar gun or something. Okay, inscribed Viking monument. Oh, stone, something stone. Uh, okay, I don't know. Should I, I wonder if this should be very recognizable. You know, is this a household term that I'm just, household name that I'm just not thinking of? I don't know. ICU standbys could be RNs, registered nurses, could be in an intensive care unit. 
So then what's this? Takes off. Oh, subtracts, right. It's not takes off in the sense of flying, soaring into the air. It's not takes off in the sense of leaving. It takes off in the sense of removing something. Okay. So pastries popularized during the Habsburg Empire. Uh, Streusels. It feels appropriately, I don't know, sort of Austrian. Uh, I thought this had an, this had an extra E in it. Let's see. I don't, I don't know if this is right. Inscribed Viking monument. I don't know. Some fur lined slippers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uggs are fur lined slippers. And then fair treatment. Fair treat. Oh, no. I was thinking spa for some reason, like spa treatment, but I don't know. I don't know why that would be fair. So I give. Oh, Uruguay. What is this? Smallest country ever to win the FIFA World Cup. Oh, nice. Uh, well done, Uruguay. Fair. I think they actually generally have a strong, strong football national team. Uh, fair treatment. Some Sue Sup. I don't really. I don't know why I can't see this. Catchy song. A uh, catchy song slang is a banger. Okay, so it's Sue. Why is that? Fair treatment. Fair treatment. Sue, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, strudels. Strudels is what I was thinking of. Isn't there something called strudels as well? But I think it is spelled differently, which is what I thought. So I was just, okay, strudel. Apple, like apple strudel, for instance. Okay, so fair treatment is due, as in your due, what you're due, your fair treatment. It's what's accorded to you. Okay, that's that's. Good. I'm glad I finally got that. Oh, a rune stone. Okay. So presumably this is not one specific thing, but a sort of category of monument, a stone inscribed with runes, which would make sense. Okay. And then family connections or ties. Great. Now we can finish the final corner, hopefully. What neuroplasticity allows our brains to do, it, imag it allows it to what sort of reshape itself, learn, um, remap, remap neural connections. That'll be it. Okay, throw down could mean to literally cast something to the floor, or it could mean to throw down to fight, to, to, to you know, engage in combat, but I'm not sure. I wish I could blank that. I wish I could utter that. I don't think that's right. I wish I could unsee that. There we go. That's a fairly modern phrase. I wish I could unsee that. It's something terrible you've seen. Verb in a Hemingway title rises, and then the sun also rises. Exigencies our needs. If you, yeah, it's something you just act, actually absolutely need. Uh, coach's first name on Cheers must be Ernie. Did not know that. Um, I mean, I have seen, you know, a handful of episodes of Cheers, but it was definitely sort of before my time in terms of my age. Uh, throw down to a brawl. Yeah, it, it is to fight. It is to fight. And then this looks like en masse. Yes, in a coordinated fashion, doing things together en masse. Edible wrapper is seaweed, so like nori, you know, used in sushi, etc. And like some beaches and convertibles are topless. So you could have a topless uh, beach and you could, uh, you know, where people are topless or you could have topless convertibles where cars are topless. And then finally, we have novel opening. Oh, Neo. So, so right. Okay, that's that's a nice clue. So you read this and obviously you think of oh, the opening of a, the, the sort of preamble to a work of fiction, but uh, no, it's an opening. It's a prefix to a word uh, that means something new, something novel. And Neo does mean that when prefixed. And there we go. Tricky puzzle, I thought. I thought that was a tough one. Uh, let me know how you felt. So it was <laughs> the grid. It was foreboding when I saw the grid through the gauzy privacy veil. But then when we unveiled it, uh, the grid itself wasn't so foreboding, but it turned out uh, the puzzle in total maybe was. It was a tricky puzzle uh, for me. And let me know if you felt the same. I mean, definitely some really specific knowledge in here. I mean, we had geography with Roan. We had, um, uh, we had, I guess, culinary knowledge sort of in a way, Metze. Uh, we had cultural knowledge like Jazz Fest. 
Um, oh, more food, strudels. It's so funny, popularized during the Habsburg Empire. That's really interesting knowledge. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, just a, just a bit of a tough tough puzzle for me for whatever reason, and uh, but I really enjoyed it. Hope you did as well. It was a very wide ranging in terms of knowledge, which I which I always enjoy, and then especially when there's something I can go uh, go read about later, which perhaps I'll do with rune stones. Curious about that. I'm sure I've encountered that in some form before, but I'm curious to read about the significance. Anyway, that was the Saturday crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle, a much larger themed grid. Probably won't be as tricky as this one, uh, but it'll be big. There'll be a lot to solve, so join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. (laughs) 